and we're going. We're we going. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, so welcome, uh, Rachel. Um, Rachel <laughs> from um, Modern Lotus Garden. She's an intuitive uh, reader, um, life coach, and tarot reading um, mentor. And she does tarot reading and many other cool stuff. And um, I'm dying to get to know her and her abilities and her her craft. And um, welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yes, um, so feel free to ask whatever. Um, I love questions. So awesome. This will I, be love, fun. I love asking. Um, <laughs> so maybe you could like talk a bit about yourself in the beginning, like in a short way, where you come from and um, what have you experienced and what's your like, like view on life. Um, yeah. Okay, we can definitely do that. Um, well, first of all, Hello, um, I'm Rachel Arazzo. I own Modron Lotus Garden and I also have Crone Academy where I help other people tap into their energetic natural abilities, psychic abilities, learn divination, things like that. Um, I also really, really enjoy chakra work. I've been doing this officially as a business for almost two years, but I've been, um, doing both divination and chakra work since I was like nine. Um, I'm from the U.S. in Colorado, and I have a degree in theater with a minor in American Sign Language. So I specialize in acting and directing, and so everybody on my own <laughs> channel or in my groups knows I get very theatrical with all of my stuff because I compare it to actual acting exercises, and I um, we do a lot of characterization and finding easy everyday ways to expand your chakras or to memorize tarot card meanings. <laughs> Or just tap into your natural abilities. And my thing is, if it's not easy, then we need to figure out how we can break it down even more so you can do this every day and build it up in easy ways. Awesome, awesome. Um, that's actually one of my questions. Like, how do, like, normal people that have no experience and no, like, skills whatsoever, I know they have skills, but how do those people, like, um, like know stuff or... or can use their intuitive abilities like in an easy um, way, for example? Yeah, that's an awesome question. I feel like a lot of people wonder that. So for example, we all have our intuition. It's usually the little calm voice in the back of your head that tells you calmly what is happening right now. People, because we live in such a technologically driven society where everything is immediate access or we focus on how can I build myself up, 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 up and go the best path in terms of how to make money or to get directly to what we want, not necessarily the path that is best for us. We tune out our intuition because we don't a lot of the times follow our morals or ethic reasoning or anything like that. So when it comes to opening up that part of yourself, there's a couple of easy things you can do. First of all, meditation, which when I say meditation, I don't mean sit cross-legged for five hours and no more way, way, fight out. I don't mean like that. Um, I mean, focus on your breath and how you're breathing for maybe five seconds. And the more you do it, the longer that you do it, maybe 10, 15 minutes every day, it quiets down all the clutter in your mind. Just like a computer needs to defrag, your body needs to defrag as well. So if you get all the gunk out of your system just by meditating for a little bit, then it makes it easier for your intuition to speak up. Another way you can do this is by journaling a couple set sentences every day, whatever pops into your head. Um, a lot of the times people think, when they sit down to journal, they have to do millions of pages and they have to be in this amazing inspired state or they have to be an amazing writer and that's not the case. All you have to do is just literally write down whatever comes to you because it's another way of defragging your brain. You're getting all the gunk out. So if you're worried about a situation and you rant about it on paper for a minute, it's not in your system anymore. You've healthily purged it. So then your intuition can speak up even more. Um, a couple other ways, especially if you want to think specifically with chakras, our intuition lies in our third eye. 
so right in the middle of your forehead. Each of the seven main chakras, because we have about 400 or more all over our body, the seven main ones really correspond with different colors. The third eye goes with purple a lot of the time. So if you wear lots of purples, um, like I have my purple nails to go with it. If you do purple crystals, if you're a crystal person, use herbs that associate with purple like lavender or eat naturally occurring purple things like eggplant or blackberries, things like that. Things that are from the earth that are of that color. It's a really subtle way to help activate your third eye and help your intuition wake up. So these are things that you can easily scatter throughout the day that could take 10 minutes or five minutes and it'll start speaking up a little bit more. And that's when you start to notice reoccurring numbers on the microwave <laughs> or, <I had> <laughs> or 50 butterflies following you in your car. Or <laughs> um, I've noticed, especially when I am on point and I am flowing really well and I'm driving, all the stoplights change to green right as I get to them. And then it's like, yeah. and I'm like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so yeah. and some easy ways and then you pick up on those signs. And then you're like, that's when journaling comes in handy. What was I thinking about at that moment that made that happen? Or yeah. what did I do earlier today to make that flow a little bit better? And just getting into that cycle will awaken not only your intuition but also everyone's a little bit psychic we wake up our psychic abilities a little bit um and it makes just life flow a lot better for you does that make sense yeah it ma makes totally sense i experienced this uh, myself um i actually practiced a while ago opening my third eye like plain just opening it because i had no idea what i was doing <laughs> but, uh, involved like heavy breathing and like getting much much ox oxygen inside of your body and like like making voices like tones that resonate with your like uh, third eye and stuff like that and funny enough always i had like in the beginning these, these purple colors like flashing inside of my um, eye so it like fits perfectly with what you described um, just now and i also had this like the synchronicities that you just like feel like you should go this way today and mm -hmm. you just do it and then all of a sudden you meet someone you never like met like five years ago like an old friend or something like like coincidences and it's like fascinating to me and i'm i keep uh, preaching about this to my friends and stuff but they all think like i'm crazy and i'm <laughs> I, yeah. no, it, it makes perfect sense though because that's another thing that a lot of people don't do um because for example we're focused so much around money and money all it is is just another form of energy and how much it flows to you so if for example i were to walk into michael's it's a craft store here in the united states and i were to go through and think "Ooh, i would love these stickers but what about x y and z the thought of i want these stickers is my intuition the x y and z on why i shouldn't have it is me arguing with my intuition mm -hmm. so yeah. it's just a matter of no, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I have the impulse to grab it because for whatever reason I deserve it or I just want something pretty. Or not going with it, that'll determine whether or not you're following your intuition or not. Um, and I think that is something everybody has a problem with. <laughs> mm, totally, totally. Yeah. Especially because then um, we're taught to repress it so much, especially growing up, that it's like, no, that's not logical. Don't do that. Where it's like, you can involve logic in it quite a bit, but at the same time, there's also a matter of trusting yourself to make the right decision, you know? That's so true. The trust is so important. Like, I mean, I'm skipping like uh, uh, topics, but like I, I, I played around with tarot cards as well, like mm -hmm. a couple of months and stuff. And I like, I had like this very heavy decision in my life I needed to do. And like the tarot card, I made it like 50 times or so. Like, like because I had no trust in my like ability to figure out what's right for myself and the tarot cards always put the same answer down it was the answer I was afraid of but it was the right answer and my, my brain kept like telling me this is the reason you shouldn't do it this is the reason like like all this rational rationalization mm -hmm. um yeah and so it's a big part like to have trust in yourself to have trust in what your heart tells you yeah. 
So I'm totally seeing that. Exactly. And that's another thing, like, if you think about it, a, a lot of people, when it comes to activating their intuition, they feel like also that they shouldn't have any help with it in any kind of way that they need to use just themselves. It's like the equivalent of every, like thinking you can only be a singer and you're the only instrument that you work with. Whereas in music, we have flutes, we have violins, we have tubas, we have all kinds of different instruments that you can use to activate music. It's the same thing for your intuition. There are different tools that you can use physically in order to activate that. And that's all they are. It's just a tool. So tarot cards, for example, if you are more visually based and you are a more visual learner, they're easier to do because all they are is based off of different scenes or stereotypes that we have in our lives. So if we take, for example, the five of wands, in the Rider Waite Smith deck where these five people are fighting over sticks. We have those moments in our life where we are battling with other people like that, where we speak over each other, or we have an idea that we want to get across, usually at work or with friends if you're arguing about a certain subject. That's a perfect representation of that kind of struggle or that kind of aggravation, and it makes you relate to it more and tap into your intuition a little bit more. You, that's why also pendulums are really good, runes, some people use bones, and they light bones on fire and read the cracks, all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of different tools that you can use, and all of them are super valid in activating your intuition. That's why a lot of readers, like let's say they just get started and just enjoy looking at the cards, the more they do readings for other people or for themselves, they're realizing wait a minute, how did I know that? It's because your intuition is activating, you know, your particular abilities, like clairsentience, clairvoyance, all of that. And it's just expanding itself. Yeah. And it's totally valid. And it's, you're not crazy. <laughs> it's actually happening. Like, like my conscious brain uh, knows that I'm not crazy, but like my subconscious mind, like just, just nagging, like old behavior patterns, old beliefs, old like, um, I don't know, patterns from family and stuff like that. They exactly. keep like um, attacking your like intuition and yourself are attacking it. Yeah. So um, what about your like abilities? What are you clairvoyant? Are you a clairaudient? What can you tell us a bit about this? Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I am clairvoyant, clairaudient and clairsentient, which in English, in a really simple way to put it is I experience things kind of like a movie in my head. I don't go that so raven and and I wig out for a second. I it's just kind of like a movie within my mind. And the more connected that I am, uh, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, the clearer the picture is, I'll get color or I'll get sounds. So for example, I did a one of the very first readings that I ever did paid. Um this woman was asking about her husband. And as I was drawing the cards, for some reason, I was hearing ESPN, which is a sports network. I'm like, I'm hearing football in the background. And I'm like, no one's watching football in my vicinity. What's going on? I didn't realize until afterwards that I was really picking up on her husband sitting there watching TV. And wow. that's what he was hearing. Um, and then clairsentience, that's just when things pop into your mind and you know or you can physically sense things. So I've been doing meditation and energy work for so long that when I'm tapped in and tuned in and turned on, I feel kind of like how your leg falls asleep around my crown. And the more intense it is, the more I'm picking up on something. And I've also noticed if I start to feel that energy down my hands and everything like that, it doesn't matter how far away the person I'm reading for is, they'll feel it as well. And then they're like, what's going on? Nope, that's just me. I'm sorry. <laughs> because all it is, is if you think of it in terms of energy, when we call somebody like this, call right now, we're sending out an electrical impulse to a satellite, which connects to another one, which then connects to your computer. Same thing with energy between human beings. We're made of energy. We eat food and sleep in order to replenish our energy. If I wanna say, I wanna do a reading for this person, I send out an electrical impulse, which goes to, you know, different universal satellites or 
follows different energy waves and it connects to that person and whew, there you go so that's all it really works and of course you're going to use less energy if the person is right in front of you because it's it's just right there but if i were to do a reading for you and you're all the way across the world <laughs> i'm going to be more drained because i'm using more but you would be just fine because you're just receiving it you're not sending oh. it okay like, yeah. but I, like how can we like imagine this how is your life i mean if you have all these like intuitions and and knowings like isn't your life like amazing because of it because you have all the answers you have all the like support like all the knowing all the if you have a question you just ask your intuition and it's just spot on or how can we imagine that like i imagine that that's a wonderful question no um and i feel like that's a lot of thing that's something that everybody wonders it's if you think about it this way if you let's say wanted an apple, but you didn't have an apple with you. There are steps that you have to do in order to go get that apple, right? You have to get your money, you have to get in the car, you have to go to the grocery store, buy it. But even when it's in your physical hand, you're not ready to eat it yet because it's not yours yet. So you have to buy it, go to the car, maybe wash it off, and then boom, you can have your apple. It's the exact same thing with energy. You might want something, but not be energetically ready for it. So there's steps that you have to do along your way. Your intuition can be a bit of a butthead sometimes and not tell you the direct path from A to Z. They're gonna give you all the little twists and turns in between because you need to learn and grow and be energetically ready for it. And then it needs to be ready for you at the same time. That's why Going back to tarot, if we were to look at the Fool's Journey, the first 22 cards of a tarot deck, traditional tarot deck, the Fool wants to be at the world, which is the very last card for the main ones. But he has to go through this transformation in order to get to the very end. He has to go through the lovers, and then he has to go through his solitary stage with the hermit, and then go through death, which is an ending that you see coming, have a sudden ending with the tower, get, his in, get in the depressive period, come up through the sun, and then he's ready for the world. And then it starts all over again hmm. for the next thing that he wants to do. So we all kind of have to go through that. So even though I want a million dollars in my bank account right now, am I energetically ready for that? I think it would go away as quickly as it would come in if I were to have that at this right exact second. So you need to build yourself along the way there. That's why if we try to force something, we don't feel as much satisfaction as if we've been waiting for it or if we've been working for it. There's satisfaction in, because let's say you want a job. I use a lot of analogies all the time <laughs> or metaphors. <laughs> if, if you want a job, you go out, you go to the interview, you sit down, you talk to different people, put in applications, and then there's satisfaction in having the job. Whereas if you were to think, wow, I'd really love a job, and someone would immediately call you and say, yes, here's a job for you, there's like, okay, I guess that works. There's not as much satisfaction in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. But, but sometimes it is really that way. Like sometimes I, I really have to work like, as everybody else like for stuff like normally but sometimes especially as my intuition gets better sometimes i just wish something or ask the universe for it and like it pops up in my life like the next day or something sometimes like a minute uh, later or something and it's crazy to me and i figured out if you're really skilled at this and really like have your shadow work down and have your like beliefs like cleared and stuff like that if you're like a streamline i mean life probably looks a lot better that way yeah, it, right. it just shows how much more practiced you are with your energy. And one big thing about it, is for it to randomly pop up like that, is one, how much energy have you put out already towards that thing? Um, okay. So if you, let's say for months, have been working to find a wonderful person in your life, that means that you have done personal work behind it and dealt with your own inner demons. You've probably been through a relationship or two that's taught you, no, this is not the person I want to be with. This is who I want to be with. 
you've done a little background work, even if you haven't particularly thought about it in a while. That's why sometimes if you want something, it'll show up the next day. Yeah. And in, in just that kind of time frame. But if you're thinking something and then try to force your way to it, it's like moving up against a wall and you're pushing it, thinking you want to be on the other side of it. Sometimes you have to go around the corner and you have to kind of flow with it and yeah. find another route. Does that make sense? Of course, it makes totally sense. Like I had this like working for something I really wanted and it didn't show up like a bust. I was busting my ass for it and it didn't show up. And then one day I just like gave up. I just gave up. And then it just showed up. Like you really, like you yeah. really need <laughs> resistance, like I feel like. And then it just automatic. Like you have all this build up energy behind it and then resistance is gone and then just bam. Yeah. yeah, and that's the big thing is resistance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if you have so much that you're going towards a goal and then you're like, screw this, it's been forever and you, it feels like giving up, but really what you're saying is I'm letting it go, then it works. It, it's like any type, for example, a sigil in magical workings. The only way a sigil works is if you aren't consciously paying attention to it. So, for example, I have a sigil in my car for all passengers will be safe within this vehicle. Can you explain uh, what a sigil is? Like yes, a sigil, um, you would usually see this in movies with witches where it's a magical symbol that's like written in something or scrolled onto something um, where you take a statement. So, for example, all passengers in my vehicle, including myself, will be safe. I break it down by getting rid of the vowels getting rid of repeat consonant letters, put them in a grid, and create a symbol from it. And when the symbol is created, you then activate it by getting it out of your existence. So for this one, I put it to fire because you turn on a battery, a spark ignites, car starts. So I burned it before I put it in there. I put it on the dashboard next to the... Um, the speed meter, the speedometer. Mm -hmm. So out of the corner of my eye, I see it, even if I might not consciously see it. So then my subconscious is like, oh yeah, you want the energy to make sure everybody inside your vehicle is safe and that the vehicle will run no matter what. And it makes sure as it happens. So I've had cars <laughs> that should have broken down years before <laughs> still run and still be working just fine, just decay slower because I have that actively on the car and I have people in the car that I want to protect. Something like that. Um, Whereas, for, and if you relate that to something that you want in your life, put it out there that you want it, do the work to get it, go out, put the applications out there, which is a perfect example. If you put an application out there, then there's nothing you can do after that, except maybe check up on it by calling in a couple times. Besides that, it's out of your hands. So forget about it, and then it'll come back with a response of yes or no. Does that make sense? Was that a little yeah, complicated? It, 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 makes, it makes sense, yeah, it makes sense. Um, also, this, um, like, the way of the universe, like, it's never, like, the, the way you think it is. It's always around, like, 10 corners and, like, 10 coincidences and stuff like that. And we try, like, to, to um, figure it out beforehand and, like, try to mentally um, make a plan and stuff like that. And our whole like civil civilization is built um, um, on that like paradigm that's, that you have to like figure it out. You have to study, you have to make a plan and then will everything work out. But for some people it doesn't. And for some people it does. But oftentimes people have like the most amazing lives that just came to them in a way that just worked for it. But there were so many weird coincidences and they just um, had the intuition what they wanted and somehow they got it and it was not a plan like not at all and i find that fascinating and i i want to learn more about it and um, so my next question would be like what is what's in my life really important right now is to follow my joy i like i learned this lesson to follow my joy and i keep hammering at it because as a child i was really good at it i just wanted to do this and that and that and then the parents came in and said like no you can't do this, you can't do this, and there are rules, and you have to behave like a like brave child and whatever. And so we, I think we, um, I don't know the word, like unlearn the stuff 
we mm-hmm. naturally know. So we need to relearn it again. And um, what's your take on following your joy? Like, how, what can you say about this in your life? If you do just what you like, you probably attract more of what you like, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and this really applies to me very well because, like you said, growing up, we are taught to know we put our imagination away. We put all that fun stuff away and because we need to be practical when the key is really to find the balance between the two. It's like the balance between creativity, the feminine and the structure, the masculine things like that. Not in terms of gender, just energy. Children are wonderful at being imaginative and coming up with anything on the spot. I have a I have an almost two-year-old. I see her do this every day. (laughs) And when we want to tap into that energy that lets us create whatever we want, the key is create. So we give into that inner child a little bit. That activates our sacral chakra, which is second from the bottom. Um, And that's all about imagination and creativity and pleasure and sexual energy, things that tap into ourselves. So if the key then, if you think about it, in terms of a chakra layout, we start with the root, which is the foundation and the structure. You have to have the structure in which to then be creative. Because otherwise that creativity is just going all over the world and it's just spreading out and it's not really going to do anything. Whereas first, if you give yourself a basin to fill that creativity with, then you have something wonderful that you can continue to use over and over and over again. And that really has worked out in my life. I needed to, I found, especially because this is my business and I run this every single day full time. If I did not create some kind of structure for myself in terms of how long I work every day, I would do it all day and I'd be tired, I'd be drained, I wouldn't pay any attention to anybody else because that structure was lacking because I was trying to do everything at once and be a jack of all trades. Whereas if I stick it to between nine and two, this is what I'm doing and afterwards I put it away, then my creativity knows when to kick itself in and when to come on. And then a different type of creativity happens when I'm out of it. Then I can connect to other people I can do the things that I love and be a little bit more balanced. You have to have structure and creativity together. But I find that the real reason a lot of people have issues with this is because we live in masculine in terms of, again, structure and rules and goal setting and step-by-step processes. We live in those kinds of societies a lot of the times. And we lack the feminine side, which is creativity, letting things flow, slow down, let things be fertile and growing. It's two different processes. There's go, 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 and then there's slow and steady wins the race. The key is to find the balance between the two. We can't completely go feminine, otherwise we're lacking structure, and we can't completely go masculine, otherwise we're lacking the flow. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Like... Yeah, yeah. And awesome. you talked about uh, the second chakra. Can you like mm-hmm. give us a basic breakdown? I know it's probably hard to make oh. a short, but basic breakdown for the chakras. What are they for? What's the color? Um, and also what I was wondering, I heard somewhere that if you block, you, if you have a block in one chakra, the above chakras don't get enough energy or something. I don't know if that's true, but um, maybe you can elaborate about this. A bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Then this isn't complicated at all. This can be very simple. So, Like I said, there's over 400 on your body. Usually they're on pressure points. Or if you see acupuncture where they put the needle, that's a chakra point. The seven main ones run from the base of the spine up to your baby spot on the crown of your head. The first one, well, the first three deal with everything in the physical realm. These take care of all our responsibilities and give us balance here. The center one, the fourth one, gives a bridge between the top three spiritual ones, which is everything with expansion and intuition and psychic abilities, and with the physical. So if we start with just the physical, people in everyday life in the mundane world have these on point because they deal with them every day. You have your root, which is red, 
at your foundation, your stability, um, if it feels off and your root chakra is blocked or out of alignment, um, your equilibrium, literally your balance will be off or you may have diarrhea for diseases. Um, your sacral chakra is right above that in your pelvis and your reproductive organs, whether you're a man or a woman. This deals with creativity, imagination, sexual pleasure, and that's orange. So it's Roy G. Bibb. It's like the rainbow going all the way up. The solar plexus, which is your stomach, your intestines, everything like that, deals with confidence, a little bit of nurturing, but it's also very much about expression. Different than the sacral chakra kind of expression. There's creative expression and then there's more what you project to the world expression. And that's yellow. The bridge is your heart. It's your heart chakra. It's green or pink, depending on what some people prefer, because it deals with love and friendship and connections with people. Moving up, your throat chakra is the super, super light blue, and it deals with communication. It can be blocked by the lies that we tell ourselves, so I'm not pretty enough, I'm not handsome enough, I'm fat, all that kind of stuff, and the lies we tell other people, or if we bite our words and don't completely vocally express ourselves. Our third eye is our intuition. It's blocked by any illusions that we give ourselves, and our crown is all about just spiritual awakening and just being completely connected to the universe and everything that happens. So anytime they're all lined up, people will believe in the Kundalini, which is the snake that sits at the bottom of your spine. And when your chakras are completely aligned, it moves up and just loops around and has a continual flow of cosmic energy. Or when they're all aligned, I like to think of it as just the universe, all your angels, all your guides, everybody that you like to talk to is just flowing this continuous energy completely through you to your root. When it's blocked, all that means is you have something dealing with that particular chakra that needs to be addressed. So if you are super self-conscious and you're ashamed of who you are, things like that, you have a block in your sacral chakra, which means that you need to creatively express yourself in some kind of way, paint, sing, something, or you need to get laid and have some sex. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you are a person to give, 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 and not take anything in return, chances are your solar plexus is bigger, which is why um, if you this happens for years on end, people's body shapes will shift around it. So usually heavier set people, like myself, tend to give, 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 and we have very large solar plexuses. Oh, okay. The more energy work you do as well, which I, this is very interesting when working on hotlines and with clients, when they have problems with love or they're grieving a lot, it'll feel like, like a lump in your chest that's when you feel that kind of pressure you have a block on your heart chakra and that means you're grieving something that you need to let go um and just like when they're blocked you might feel pressure or feel clogged or feel off balance um when they're open you may feel tingling in those areas which is why i mentioned my crown is tingling sometimes if you focus on your third eye and really visualize what it looks like You'll feel it in the middle of your forehead. Um, if you really want to ground yourself, you may feel some tingling in your legs or in your toes. And it, it doesn't feel like it's falling asleep. It'll feel like it's falling asleep, but you won't get the pain tingles afterwards. It's just this natural ebbing and flowing with the universe kind of thing. All right. Does and, that make sense? If, if, totally. If, if like one chakra is blocked, does it influence the other ones as well? It can. So for example, if your heart chakra is blocked, you're not able to communicate how you feel as well. So that'll mess up your throat. Mm -hmm. If you are having issues with diluting yourself or purposely making yourself ignorant and blocking your third eye, you're not going to be able to receive any knowledge or messages from your guides as well. And if you also think of it this way, the more blocks you have, 
And the more your energy is tied up in something that's going wrong, your body then conserves itself, right? That's mm -hmm. when it builds up fat stores in your body to make sure that you will be able to eat. Or if you aren't receiving enough outward nourishment, it'll break, start breaking down the organs in your body and feeding itself that way. Your vibration then is lower because a tuning fork, if it's not getting as much force as usual, will slow down its vibrating. And then that's when usually people feel depressed, they feel angry, feel lonely. And then that's usually when they say, God, please help me. But if your energy is super small, it's going, God, please help me. Like it's super quiet and can't hear anything. And then nothing comes in hmm. because then everything is locked down. Because why would you want to receive energy from elsewhere when everything's blocked up? Inside yourself, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So the key then, if you feel blocked up, is to get out of that, start focusing on more what makes you happy in that moment, and that unblocks it a little bit. Work on rebalancing yourself, being happy again, feeling joyful, feeling appreciative. Okay, that cleared everything else up. You're vibrating now. Your body isn't conserving energy. So now everything's flowing a lot better. You're expanding. And then now when you say, hey, God, I want something or hey, higher being or inner being or guides, come talk to me. Your voice is louder energetically and they can hear you. Awesome. And that's when you think, man, a chocolate sundae with a cherry on top and caramel drizzling would be amazing right now. 10 minutes later, that's what you have for dessert. I mean, it's, it's amazing, but at the same time, it's like fucked up because if you're in the, <laughs> in the hospital, you need the help. But if you're exactly. like, like awesome, everything is awesome, like you're healthy, you have friends, you have money, everything, then you don't need any help. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's like the law of attraction. Like if you have everything, you get more of it. If you don't have anything, you even lose stuff. Like it's, it's crazy. Like the, the polarity is crazy. So, Like, if you start talking, I, there come so many more questions to my head. I, I don't know how much time you have. Uh, let me know if you... Um, oh, you're absolutely prepared. fine. We can keep going. Okay, okay. Um, for the topic of, like, um, guides, you talk mm -hmm. about guides. Um, do you... Are you connected to your guides at all times? Do you speak to your guides? And if you speak to your guides, how do you communicate to them? And maybe um, you can tell the people um, how they can connect to their guides. Absolutely. We can do that. Um, yes, you have all kinds of different guides and there are different levels of guides. I actually teach my students about this in my academy where there's different levels. So for example, we have the ascended masters kind of guides. And these are people who, while they were living, reached the state of enlightenment, were healers, things like that. And were really important. A lot of times were really important religious figures. So Jesus, would be one, Buddha would be one, physical people that reach that state of enlightenment. These are types of spirit guides that will help multiple people, can be called upon, and will offer knowledge kind of in a really vague sensing. They'll give you the tools, but you got to go find out for yourself kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> There's also ancestral guides. So if people are contacted by family members that they loved or people from past lives who have cared about them, these are ancestral guides. And you can ask them for help at any time because they are always with you because energy is constantly around you. They're also around you as well. There are elemental guides because we have different elements within our universe, right? We have Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, if we want to do just spirit as an energy. These are guides that are true forms of that element. And a lot of the times they will show up if you are lacking in that element or if you are incredibly strong in that element. So my main guide, her name's Serena, I saw her in the middle of a show. I was meditating for like five minutes on stage during an during a intermission. I looked up in the valance, up at the curtains, and I just see this mermaid swimming up there. And I'm like, am I crazy? What am I seeing right now? No, it was her. And she chilled up there for the rest of the show, and she still likes to show up sometimes. So 
she's with the water element, I'm super watery a lot of the times, even though I have a lot of earth in my birth chart. <laughs> so, but I do tap in a lot with my emotions, my intuition, which are all with water. So she will come in sometimes. Um, another part of spirit guides and energetic beings are angels. If you believe in angels and those kinds of beings, they have their own hierarchies depending on which culture or belief system that you go with, but they were all made specifically to serve you. So there's none of that, please, can the angels help me? It's more like, no, Michael, get down here, come help me, kind of way. Um, there's also on the opposite spectrum, daemons, which are kind of like demons, but not really. All daemons are, are if you believe that when you were born, there is an opposite energetic being that is also born with you. Usually they're the opposite gender. So you would have a, you would have a girl, I'd have a boy. Um, they have been through all of your life paths and have experienced all of the different choices that you could make, like in multiverse theory um, and quantum leaping and everything like that. They've experienced all of it. And if you work with them, they can lead you down which path will get you where in more uh, of an energetic okay, sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot me. of like, info. Like, <laughs> like the last, <laughs> the last bit you just lost me. Like, what yes. do you mean with like your counterpart? Is it like an yes. vibration and opposite of you? Like, yes, basically, if you believe, like for example, in comic books, multiverse theory, where every yeah. choice that you make has two paths, and a universe is spawned from the one that you didn't make. And then it continues and oh, continues okay. and continues. Daemons have experienced all of those paths and know where which one is going to lead you toward being a millionaire or being a master psychic or being a master healer or whatever path you want to take. There's a, there's a version of you that your daemon knows is a super famous singer wherever you are. Things like that. What you can do with a daemon, they're always with you. They're usually right behind you. A lot of people freak out during astral projection when they see them because it, that's when you get the stories of people being paralyzed in their sleep and they see dark figures in their room. It's literally just their daemon sitting in the room. They're just forcing the projection so they can't okay. consciously figure out what is going on in there and they get terrified because... Yeah, it's this dark shadow thing that you don't realize, you don't understand why it's them. Or they freak out because they see another version of themselves, but they know it's not them. That's what it is. Either that or it's their guide always sitting there and just waiting for you to say, come forward, I want to talk to you. Then they okay, will okay. open up. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty complicated. <laughs> but, but, I, but I can follow you. Like, the, crazy, the crazy thing is, like, I, I believe this stuff, like... <laughs> I experienced so much. And so, but with Damon, you don't mean like demon, right? You mean no, like. It's spelled like, differently. It's D A E M O N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So, but Damon is not your spirit, your primal spirit guide, right? Or is no. it the same? They can okay. be. There are different, different types of guides. This is one of those types okay, of okay. spirit guides. Okay. Where they have just experienced everything that you've gone through. They're usually the temperamental opposite of you. So how I'm incredibly open-minded and probably the least judgmental person you'll probably meet, my daemon is the opposite. Mm. They will judge you for everything. Okay. <laughs> and they're also the sex that you were born with. They are that, the opposite. So I was born a woman. Okay. I have a man for mine. You can, through, they like shadow work a lot because they know all of your negatives and they are, they are pretty much your shadow only with a different name. But they're not dangerous. They're one to help no, you, right? No, they're not. Okay. They're there to help you. They're not going to awesome. hurt you. Awesome. They, they may show up as that cynical voice in the back of your head that tells you, no, you can't do this. No, you like, they may give illusions for your third eye and block it up depending on how self self deprecating you are. If okay. you aren't very good at being in tune with your intuition or really giving yourself a lot of self-care and realizing your worth, you'll hear them more. The key is just to be like, no, shut up. I'm fine. And to okay. learn to turn that off. But no, they're not going to hurt you. 
it just when you're at a lower vibrational point because they are there on this physical plane with you and they're right next to you you'll hear them more okay. the key is just to figure out whether or not this is you talking to you or if this is just the negative voice in the back of your mind that's talking to you okay interesting so um you talk with your guides right or do you or is it some kind of knowing that they transfer onto your consciousness or is it like really like a communication and if so how does it like can you say an example of that like how does it work with you well like talking to your guides? this really depends on like i said everyone's a little bit psychic it depends on how you receive information the best um if we think of Esther Hicks and Abraham, if you've ever read Abraham Hicks books, she's clairaudient. So she first received vocal messages. She's also a little bit of clairsentient because the very first time she talked to her guide, she realized during meditation, her head was moving, which you'll notice that sometimes your body will move involuntarily during meditation. Mm. It's just your guides testing you to see how you can move. She noticed her nose was spelling the alphabet. <laughs> and when she told her husband, Jerry, he then started writing down whatever letters came up and it said, I am Abraham. I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. That's, that's what happened. And then over time, they would talk that way. Then it moved to typewriter. Then it would be audible and she could hear it. So that's one way that she figured it out. I'm visual. So when I first started, I was doing a lot of visualization during meditation. I actually made a meditation for this, where you go through and you create a, your ideal home, a very safe space within your mind. And you sit down, prepare like a friend is coming over, and your guide knocks on the door and comes in to meet you. And then after that, because I'm visual, I always spoke to Serena through my tarot cards. And I would be like, hey, what, I do this every day. What messages do you have for me today? Card would come up. Okay, that's what you want to tell me today. Because it was easier for me to interpret it. It's like receiving electrical impulses on a phone receiver. The phone is going to translate it into a voice so you can actually hear it. It works the exact same way. So depending on what your ability is, how you best, usually the best way to figure this out is how you like to learn. Do you like to have somebody physically in front of you and talk to you? Or do you like to have, like, be by yourself and write it all down? Things like that. Depending on how you like to do it, that'll be the best way for your guide to talk to you and to communicate back and forth. And over time, the more you do it, the easier it will get. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, totally, totally. So, um You talk to your guides through your cards, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now okay. I don't even have to do that anymore. I can just meditate and I can talk to her as well. So, okay, but can you tell us a bit about this? Because yes. I find this fascinating. <laughs> like, how do I, I, I imagine like, like my little child uh, inside of me says like, ask them all the important questions and you have an awesome life. But I figured that's not like, that easy. I think they, they give you like, stuff that you can work on or, or, or point at your shadows or point at directions you have to focus on they don't give you like direct and concrete answers and stuff like that but um how does she talk to you like mm -hmm. can you make an example of that because I yeah. think this well all the things that you want that you just said that you wanted to talk to your guide about you can for sure do that if you want because that's literally <laughs> If you follow the story of Esther and Jerry Hicks and how they talked to Abraham, that's literally what Jerry did. He got all the pictures and all the questions that he wanted, sat down with her, and she transcribed everything that Abraham said. You uh -huh. could literally, if you want to, sit down and ask questions to your personal guide about that or to your inner being. Um, for me, personally, a lot of it is images. I'll get images in my mind that make absolutely no sense, like... What did I have the other, last night while I was meditating, I was having these weird looking dragons that then transformed into a transformer. And then there was a bunch of like little blob people from Doctor Who. And I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> what's going on, but it's super visual. So I'm like, okay, there's obviously something here. So when it comes to 
over time at first yes i used a lot of the cards especially as i was learning the cards and i was learning how to read them intuitively so i wouldn't memorize any keywords or anything like that i just would boom got it um i would talk to serena like that but okay. then now because i make a point every day to at least meditate for 10 minutes my mind is quiet enough that whatever thought pops up in my mind i know it's her it's okay. kind of another example if i have the book no i don't i put it back um if you've heard of the movie or the book eat pray love where this woman goes on the spiritual journey all over the world in the book she's pretty much talking to her spirit guide because she's when she's depressed and she's upset she writes down in her notebook i need your help and then it's like automatic writing her guide answers through her hand and that's what she's pretty much doing even though she doesn't say that mm. so that's how she communicates back and forth with her guide it really and then over time she doesn't need to do that when she goes to india and goes to her ashram and she meditates all the time she doesn't have to pull out her journal and do that she just does it in meditation while she's talking just mentally speaking to her guide and you'll learn the difference mm. of there's a different tone to your voice when you are mentally trying to talk to somebody and there's a different tone when your guide answers it's always calm it never argues with you it's always common sense and even then it could be calm and just have nothing to do with the situation that you're doing um like if you're upset and it's saying nope let's go get a pizza right now okay sure let's follow it and then it leads you on a happier path and then you're much better after that so if it, i feel like that sounds really really cryptic <laughs> and i'm trying no, not no. to do that <laughs> like i get it i just get it <laughs> i had actually i had um like Two months ago, I had like an episode of my, I think it was a guide or something because I had a really like down phase. I was really depressed and I was really unhappy with everything. And all of the sudden, like on my arm, there was a muscle like itching or like, like moving on itself. I didn't do anything and it didn't stop. So I started like pointing at stuff and it got stronger or weaker and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, I started like writing because it pointed me in the direction of like a paper and, and, a, and a pen. And like, like the, the, the guide was like tapping the syllables, like in a way, you know, and I like imagined what would this word sound like. And then I was checking, like there was a yes and there was a no, like it was amazing. And it was just such, such a basic message, but it was like, it gave me so much hope. But at the same time, if I tell this to my friends, they think I'm crazy. And <laughs> I, they think like, I, I, you know what I mean, right? Like, yeah, I do. Like it takes the right people around you like my husband is probably the most cynical person that you could probably meet in the most logic based um but at the same time he encouraged me to even start doing this stuff so i'd sit down and i'd tell him okay this is what happened to me and he'd look at me like okay you're going a little bit nuts but okay keep on going <laughs> that way you can get there and that's when when you have those kinds of experiences, you find your own personal tribe of people that you can talk to them about. So all the ladies that I work with in my business, my whole group, we all talk to each other about those kinds of things and try and, okay, I'm having a crisis right now because you guys understand exactly what I'm going through. <laughs> so yeah, that's so important. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's just, um, but if you have those experiences don't think you're nuts write it down and figure out exactly what happened later because that would be your guide trying to talk to you and yeah yeah if you have that impulse again because i get this all the time whenever i realize my guide wants to talk to me now i start getting the tingles up here and if i'm in the middle of something and i really don't feel like talking to her i'll tap it away because i don't want that feeling anymore if 
I want to keep going with that, I focus on that area like, okay, let's focus on that sensation right there and it'll spread and then more stuff will come in. So the next time you get that muscle tick, focus on it, like just specifically that and see if it starts to move your whole arm or not. And then the key is let it happen. Don't let the resistance yeah, okay. go. I mean, yeah, of course. But in the moment you're like, I'm like, still then you're like, Oh like, geez. Crazy thing, crazy exactly. Thing. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm relatively new to this all, so it takes some time to get used to it and stuff like that. Um, so it's amazing talking to you. Um, I don't know, do you want to say anything else? Do you want to maybe talk a bit about tarot or maybe do a quick um, a quick draw about something or maybe what do you sure. feel inspired to do? Um, sure, yes. I have my all right. cards right here, yeah. Um, well, and I also want to say, like, don't pressure yourself <laughs> to get everything done, like, immediately. This yeah. has taken me some time to... It took me a couple years of really refining this to even start reading for other people. Hmm. And even then, I had to notice my triggers. I went on Tumblr, and I asked people... I just put, ask me anonymously for readings, and I wouldn't get a name, I wouldn't get a birthday i would just get the situation and that helped me tap in i didn't care about anything else which is true in real life i don't even care about any of those just tell me what the world's going on and i will help you um notice that kind of thing for you what information do you need outright in order to connect with your guide or to tap into your own energy what matters to you and then that follow that path of thought so if you need to listen to rain sounds or the ocean while you're meditating in order to completely connect with your guide, that's what you need to do. Or if you need to be wearing your favorite robe and sit on a bunch of propped up pillows and just relax for five minutes, that's what you need to do. Notice the tiny things that you need and that'll make, it'll make the progress feel a lot faster and you'll grow exponentially. Does that make sense? Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Totally. Um, awesome. So what questions would you have with Taro? Or would you want me to see what's going on? Maybe like, um, like I have a big decision in my life to quit a university or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe about that. Uh, if it's a good idea for me to do it or if it's a better idea to um, continue. Um, yeah. Maybe Let's what see. my life looks like. Okay. Let's take a look. You're having problems with other students? Mm, I don't feel like I'm very happy there, yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is I got the Five of Swords first. Okay. So get that a little bit closer. Uh -huh. And that usually deals with work issues or dealings with other people feeling embarrassed or humiliated um, or just feeling really, really low. I also have, I don't particularly care for this card because of this deck. I have the King of Wands here. He just has this smirk on his face that reminds me of the manager from Office Space. That's a real big asshole. Okay. So... That would tell me also that you have a professor that has this kind of attitude towards you that makes it difficult for you to work with yeah. them or to even be able to get anything done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll agree with for the past few months, you've been having a lot of issues because I have the nine of swords here and that usually is yeah. depression and yeah. Pulling yourself away. That experience that explains why you're trying to find spiritually what to do, get more in touch with your energy. Hmm. Yeah. So my guidance then would be to get out of the room. You are doing a wonderful job at focusing just on your top three chakras that you need to start working on your bottom okay. three. All right. And to go out there and find your foundations again. Yeah. yeah. Where lots of reds and oranges and yellows and 
feel more like yourself again and actually have fun no matter what anybody else has to say because it's not going to influence yeah. you at all yeah yeah all right awesome so i mean like it's true what you said everything is true but like what's like my decision what what would be what would you suggest um in the situation to do like quit everything and start something new is that what you meant what i mean is whether you decide to leave the university or not obviously you need some different people to be around with because they just yeah. make you want to go into your room and hide yeah so figure out who in your life do you need to start letting go because they don't energetically match you anymore mm. and then either straight up tell them okay i i just don't want to hang out anymore or slowly just let them fade away because as you start improving your energy they'll realize even subconsciously there's a clash here and they will naturally leave the vicinity yeah. um if you have an issue with this particular teacher or counselor or mentor or whoever this authority figure you're having problems with leave the class if you can or mm -hmm. get somebody else that can help you bear with this person for a little while all right what you're lacking here are people that are like-minded to you yeah so totally totally yeah if you focus on instead of on the negative on i'm so unhappy i'm so messed up and uh, i feel messed up inside i'm not what i want to be and instead focus on i want a meaningful relationship with at least one person that knows what i'm going through and is loving to talk to and all the things that you want to do with somebody focus on that instead and all the wonderful things you'll get to do with them <laughs> yeah and they can show up either as a partner for a relationship or they'll show up as a friend or a mentor and they'll come just focus on the kind of person that you want to be around and those people will start coming to you and that will make being in university a lot better that may attract you to a different major or a different focus that may attract you to transferring schools or to quitting but the key is your step is to get around people that are like-minded like you and aren't going to make you feel yeah. crazy uh, yeah I, like i always I, i knew this already and i did this i asked like many people that are more like-minded and funny enough like what do you know like two days later i meet someone and like it was amazing like talking to them they are on the same wavelength as me and encourage me to do what I really want to do and stuff like that. It's, it's crazy, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, Thank you. Keep going with it then. If it's already <laughs> happening, keep it going because then yeah, it'll started. make it much more, um, much more potent. Let me use another deck. These are Lenormand cards. They're a little bit different. Uh, they okay. give a lot more specificity than Taro likes to give sometimes. And let's see physically what you can do next. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, because these can give a lot more. Okay, you have some vermin in your life, like I was saying. <laughs> these are mice, mice okay. eating at all the different fruit and produce and all kind of stuff. Get them out of your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's somebody messing with you in particular. Um, You also, I feel like this choice to either leave university or to not, there's more doors than that, that I feel yeah. like aren't being addressed. Gives, okay. Give yourself some time to figure out, okay, what other options are there besides these two? Um, because there's a big obstacle in your way. I've got a mountain here. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this obstacle, it feels huge, but it may be this big. Sometimes yeah. making a mountain out of a molehill, you know. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of people, so you're not alone. <laughs> But I feel like it's also stemming from one particular person that's making okay. you think whether or not to leave or not. Hmm. I, I would have to think about that. But maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. 
because yeah. that's the person, whether you've had an argument with them recently or whether or not they have a huge say in how what's going on at your university, that's what's causing that's what planted the seed to make you want to leave or to stay or to even have a hard time in the first place. Yeah. It would okay. have been something small, like a mouse that would have grown into something so much bigger and it's making you feel really down and really yeah, yeah. messing you up. Yeah. The thing is I like, I, I feel like I, I started it out of the wrong reasons like to be accepted or to be to fit in and stuff like that and like while my intuition got better and i got cleared out more and more and more i realized more and more that's like that this is like the worst place for me to be like i don't connect to the people i don't connect to the subjects i don't connect to anything there so it's just like forcing myself to continue doing it and that made also made me sick last year and i recovered from that as well but um yeah so you're totally right um and i have also an idea what person this could be um yeah but i will check with myself yeah then that's your answer then if yeah. you if your intuition knows that you started out of the wrong reasons yeah then that's your answer for not then it's time for you to leave it, it's dawned on me like it's dawned on me but i'm too afraid to admit it and yeah Mm -hmm. because it's it's something completely different when you're thinking it to yourself in the privacy of your own room but it's quite another thing to say it out loud yeah right yeah yeah that's so true yeah. um thank you so much rachel you're super um, welcome um, do you have any other questions or anything um like i could talk about this um like this energy, <laughs> energy stuff like for days probably because i have so many like ideas and, and questions one one thing i just wanted to really quickly uh, throw and um, before we started our um, recording mm -hmm. and while we were chatting I had like a crazy deja vu like deja vu how do you mm -hmm. say it in English I don't know do you have any idea what this means like sometimes I have these like really often and I I feel like most of the time it's when I'm more on point or more on my 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 way what I should be doing sometimes I have like three a day or something and if I'm not on my way I don't have one for like months and stuff. so what's your take on this well, what did you have deja vu about? Was it a particular phrase or was about it an everything. image? Like, deja vu is for me like everything. The feeling, what I see, what I remember, what I smell, everything. Like it's bam for like one second and then it's gone. Okay, so that's all of your, all of the possible clear abilities activating at once. So that's your psychic sense and your intuitive sense telling you, boom, this moment is important because you felt you experienced this before in some kind of way that was preparing you for something. So whenever you have that moment, stop for a second and be like, okay, what about this moment did I experience before and what is making it stand out to me? Or if it takes like a little bit, if it takes like an hour, half hour, what about that situation caused a shift in me and really take internal stock. That's when, Drilling it out would be really good. Getting a tape recorder and vocally saying it out loud can sometimes help. Um, finding somebody that you completely mesh with and talking to them about it. Any of that will really, really help bring that out. And then you're like, oh, it's an epiphany moment. What was happening in that moment that made me go, aha, you okay. know? So you had an aha moment about something. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, something went boom and it released itself. So when you have those deja vu moments over and over and over and over again throughout the course of a day, that means there's something within that day that's causing you to think a little bit differently or bring something to your attention about that yeah. day. And Usually it always, most of the time, it feels really good um, mm -hmm. also. So it feels like an, an inner like... Mm, uh, approval or inner like acceptance i don't know yeah it could yeah. also be you seeing the things that will manifest that are really really good for you and then seeing them come into fruition and then you're like oh there's because there's a sense of satisfaction in feeling that deja vu then you're like huh oh, okay yeah. i'm not crazy yeah. Yeah. so that's what's happening over and over and over again so take note of it and awesome 
figure out well, emotionally how you were in those situations and you'll be just fine. Okay, all right. I will do that. Uh, okay, <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much. We have like over an hour, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, it was an awesome time and we had so many topics um, tackled and thank you so much. And um, do you want to say anything else or what you're doing? What are you, maybe something you want to promote or I don't know. Well, sure. Um, like I said, if you guys ever want to learn more about this, I have stuff on meditation and visualization and taro and all that on the chronacademy.com website. I also am running a challenge right now. It'll be March 26th through the 30th for how to create a musical tarot deck. We make a playlist of all the different tarot cards so you can take your daily draws with you if you're more audible. Um, awesome. I'm also doing a moon sister activation circle with me and Susie Zern. We're doing monthly tarot readings and activations for the full moon. So that's coming up as well. Just look me up on Facebook. I'm everywhere. <laughs> awesome. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. But yeah, and if you ever have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than all happy right. to help. All right. All right. I will. I will. Thank you so much. And um, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.